Hey everyone and welcome back to the Firefighters Podcast where we seek to develop, inspire and motivate the world of the emergency services operator through a series of wide ranging conversations. Now before we go any further, just hit that rate, follow or subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening to. It's a key performance indicator for us and helps us reach even more people. Now here's what we've got for you today. I'm Mark Hardingham, I'm the chair of the National Fire Chiefs Council. So Mark, is this the first time you've been to the Women in the Fire Service? Yeah, it's, it's the first time I've actually come here. Well, back when I was in Essex and also when I was the Chief of Suffolk, yeah. we had some people that came to the event, but I've never come in myself. Mm. And it was about oh, two or three months ago, I saw the advert come out and I thought, well, actually, I'm the NFCC chair, so do they want me here? So <laughs> I picked up the phone to Alex Johnson and yeah. said, look, Alex, you've been involved in this for a long time. What do you think? I'd really like to come down and spend a bit of time with you. And she said, fantastic. She said, I'd love you to come down. Yeah. She said, turn up. We'll give you a purple polo shirt. We'll get you doing stuff and helping out. And right. you can kind of meet a bunch of people and see what it's like. And it's been fantastic. Because I think so. there's two aspects of it for me. First, I was really interested in it because I've been doing stuff for the women of the fire service. I've had them on the podcast before. We want to try and create a platform for everybody. But selfishly, I'll be honest with you, the professional development from stuff like this as well because yes man women boy girl whatever but we're all people here and this aspect of professional development is something that i did a lot of when i wasn't in the fire service in my old career i don't see as much of it here i know i know at sort of senior levels we yeah. do a lot of personal development do, is this sort of stuff still going on in the services how do you see professional development rather than the whole like once you get past competency what does it look like you've yeah. obviously done the whole wrong and now you're moving to an fcc yeah. role is this stuff still important? We're going to do some, some workshops tomorrow. Yeah. What is it like these days? It is enormously important. Yeah. I mean, you've got, I mean, we are, well, if you go back 15, 20 years, that sort of route of professional development was there for yeah. people in their fire service career. What did it look like back then, though? Because in well, my private sector, we had public speaking courses, we had large scale problem solving, we had Kaizen, Six Sigma, we did all of this, yeah. but I've not seen much it, of it at all. It, it wasn't perfect by any stretch, <laughs> it, never it tended be, but, to yeah. be fire service college based, okay. so not everybody op- got the opportunity to come and do it, yeah. and that sort of died away for a long time and got replaced by sort of more academic type development. Yeah. Now it's coming I'm going to get back. your qualification. But for some people, like, yeah, we have qualifications enough. coming out of our ears, but it's the soft skills I think we're not good at, and that's yeah. the bit that costs us costs us money might cost us people because they're like they have a fallout with their line manager or whoever yep. and they don't want to be at work anymore yep. the soft skills is where we fail we gravitate to the whole oh, I'm good at level 3 incident command I'm good at this you know and you're like well yeah, yeah the soft skills though so the soft skills stuff is coming so okay. if you wind the clock forward 18 months time there'll be a supervisory a middle manager and an executive leadership program that anybody in a fire service whether you wear a uniform or don't will be able to go through but and there is a but That doesn't replace the sort of stuff that is here today at this event, because this is the sort of stuff that sits in and around all of that. And you just talk to some of the people here today, listen to the six serving and ex-chief fire officers (laughs) who've just spoken, the benefit all of those have got in their careers from being involved in women in the fire service for many, many years. So 300 people or something like that here today, each and every one of those will get something out of this weekend that you just can't replicate anywhere else and you won't have the sort of peer group wrapped around you in your own service that yeah. you've got here today. And you will make friends for life at yeah, this yeah. sort of event as well. I always think things like this are like a performance enhancer. You know, you come to something like this, you get that value of association, you get that sort of supercharge, and then it empowers you to go back on like a new, you're marching to the beat of a different drum. Yeah. But when you were saying over there about the different sort of personal development that will be available to people in the future, I, what I want to sort of try and grind down into is a lot of people wait for the course to be given to them. They're like, well, my company or my service isn't putting me on anything. Or, hello, line manager, I'm at my appraisal. What is there for me? I'm like, you've got to work twice as hard on yourself as you do on the job. Yep. Not you don't work hard on the job, but it, the clue's in the name. It's personal development. What, in my own time? Yeah, in your own time. Yeah, you might have to pay for it. Yeah, you might have to travel to London. Do you want to develop or not? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? People think, oh, oh what's, the, what's the NFC going to CC going to do for me? Where's my IFE qualification? When's my service going to, you know... How do you feel? It? Should you be? Should you have to do something for yourself? You are bang on right. So <laughs> nobody looks after my personal development better than me. Yeah, that's not somebody else's responsibility to do that. So by all means, there are training courses and conferences and things like that that the organisation can pay for you to go on. Mm-hmm. If you want a number, I think that's about twenty percent of the personal development people get. Yeah, 100%. The rest of it is down to me. What do I want to expose myself to? 
what do I want to come to in terms of a conference like this? What do I want to read? Mm -hmm. What do I want to watch nowadays on YouTube yeah. or podcasts or yeah. um, TED Talks or all that sort of stuff? Because I always say to people, it's like how subliminal marketing works. It's always going in. You know, I'm listening to audio book when I'm driving, when I'm listening to the TED Talk, you yeah. know, when, I, when I'm just reflecting on a podcast episode or something like that. It's like, honey, just keep pouring it in. Whether yep. you think you're paying attention or you're not, it's going in there. Do you know what I mean? And yep. those aspects, they've got, to be, they've got to be consistent as well. You've got to do yep. it religiously. You've really got to push it. A quick reminder for all of our listeners of our monthly giveaway. Now, as part of our partnership with Hikes, Rosenbauer, and Tallyman, we give away that little bit extra to our podcast listeners every single month. You can get two personalized BA tallies. These are hard wearing. They've got your own name on them, they've got your own service number on them, and they have the podcast logo on the back. And then for the juicy stuff, Hikes give away a pair of their incredible footwear. And some of the stuff is pretty expensive stuff, to be honest with you. We try and switch it and change it every month. We are guided by the gods of Hikes to make sure we are giving you exactly what you need for that time of year. So it might be boots, it might be trainers and then once every quarter our good friends over at Rosenbauer are giving away their Boris B555 boots as well so to be in with a chance to win jump over to our social media platforms or YouTube where you need to tag a member of the emergency services in the post be following our page and you will be in with a chance to win at the end of every single month back to the show but equally you've got to consciously think I'm going to do something with it mm. because it's very easy and I've done this myself many times you go to something or you hear something or you watch something and you come away and think that was really it's interesting. It's like a warm bath. And you go, you go back. Oh, that was great. Exactly. What are we going to do with it? I don't know. <laughs> how do you consciously say, do you know what? That was fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to do something with it. You then have to create a bit of space and a bit of thinking time to think, right, what am I going to do with it? Yeah. How am I going to go about doing that? And then actually put it in practice. And as what's come across really clearly today, and sometimes it won't work. No. And that's fine. That's Absolutely. great. Because you'll learn from that and you move on. And you've got to make a plan for yourself as well. People say, oh, you know, What's the service got planned for me? What's this? But you know what? Not because people are horrible or malicious or anything like that, but they've got their own plans. Because I always say people, no one, no one wakes up in the morning and play one-to-one -one defense on your ambitions. They don't. Yep. And honestly, they don't. You know, if you're up against someone in a, in a promotion pool or something like that, they don't care. Not because they're horrible. They've got their own family, their own partner, yep. their own thing going on. They're for them, but they're not against you. Yep. But you've got to be there for you. Because if you don't have a plan for yourself, you're fitting somebody else's plan. And guess yep. what they've got planned for you? Nothing. Not because yeah. they're horrible. Just that you know, this is a public service. The number one goal is them. That's the wider good. It's not about you. You've got to push for you. I, I come back to that. No one looks after your personal development <laughs> quite like you do. Yeah. So you have a personal responsibility. Mm. The great thing about the fire service is once you're in the fire service, and anybody can join the fire service really, yeah. then anybody can do whatever they like in the service in terms of be a chief fire officer, be a fantastic firefighter, go and do something else in the service. Now, don't get me wrong, but it's more evident here today than anywhere else, really, because of the nature of the conference. There are some people who have a degree of advantage around that, yeah. and there are some people who are fighting into a headwind yeah. sometimes. And if you're fighting into Control a headwind... Control the controllables, though. Yeah, that's, that's where you do need some people wrapped around you. You need the organisation wrapped around you to help you through that headwind mm -hmm. and change the organisation as a consequence mm -hmm. of that. And that's reality, though. Even if it's, you know it's going to be harder for you, you can sit there in the puddle, slap in the water and go, this isn't fair. This isn't. You are where you are. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like, I said to, to I think I was sitting with Danny earlier, certainly, you know, let's talk about women in the fire service, stuff like that. Because they feel as though, and because they often do come from further back. You've seen the old YouTube video where the start line is the start line and yeah, people yeah. are further back and some people get a head start yeah. and step forward if you're this about. You have to have a run up, some people, before they even get there. They've got to travel to the start line. Yep. They don't start at your start line. You start at the start line, they start back there. But you can also reframe that and say, by the time I get to the start line, I've got momentum because I've had to bloody work to get yep. to the start line. So then when they start, so, and I see there's so many out, and Women the Fire is a great example. You see so many women coming into the job, they ain't messing about. They're coming in, they're nailing the competency, yep. they're, they're getting all their stuff signed off in six months, and you've got some guys and girls, but you know, typically, who are just faffing about for yep. two years and then going, oh, everyone's helping that, that person. No, they're, they're, they're pushing it. Yep. They're going, they're asking the questions. They're, I want to talk to you about coaching and mentoring. You know, when you talk about asking the questions, this yep. is something we see a lot in emergency services now. They're trying to bring back in. Not that they're that's left, but they're trying to bring more mentoring back in because it used to be the old sweat on the watch or whatever would naturally gravitate towards them or they might yeah. have the station gaffer say, you're going to pair up with so-and-so. 
People expect it to be formal now. They're like, you need to give me yeah. a mentor. Should you seek your own? I, I approach everybody and ask questions. Does it need to be a formal thing? So I think there's probably two aspects of it. I think from an organisational perspective, if you're a, a leader in the organisation, supervisory or senior, you have a responsibility to create the right environment where there is a buddy, a coaching and a mentoring type culture in that organisation. Okay. There is then something about the individual who actually goes and seeks out that opportunity. Now, I don't think you ever force that on an individual. I think you create the environment, you talk to them, you explain the benefits around it, and then you, you provide the access to it. And then people will pick up all sorts of experiences and benefits from that coaching. And it doesn't just have to come from people inside the service. Some of the best coaching and mentoring you'll get is people with a very, very different perspective. Yeah. And of course, there's the whole reverse mentoring and reverse coaching aspect that's more and more common now as well. Because people will say, oh, you know, I need it to be fair and you need to appoint me one and all that sort of stuff. But what bothers me about fairness is there isn't fairness when it comes to effort and desire and drive. Because I always say shy kids don't get sweets. So if I'm coming and, you know, you, you were just out there talking more with the chiefs, I had to walk over and get your attention. You yeah. don't know who I am. I'm just somebody coming to bother you. I just want a piece of your time. I want a thing. Yeah, okay, I want to share it with a lot of people. Hopefully help them. But ultimately, it's just someone... You, you've got to step up. You've got to put yourself out there for somebody... You could have turned around and said, sorry, mate, I haven't got any time right now. Yep. You know, maybe, maybe contact... Here's my email for my office. And that's happened a thousand times. You've got to be willing for somebody to say, yeah, okay, mate, let's go for five minutes. Yeah. Or not right now. And no right now doesn't mean no forever as yeah. well. It just means no right now. Yeah. So you're here, obviously, because you want to be here, but you're also here representing the NFCC. Why is it important to you, and more specifically, I suppose, to the NFCC, to be here supporting something like this? I'd pick out three things. Okay. So the first thing I'd say, from an inclusion perspective, as NFCC chair, I have three roles. One role is the NFCC is an organisation in itself. We employ people, and I want those people to work in the most inclusive environment they possibly can. And next year there is an opportunity for me to say to a number of the women who work in the NFCC, come to this event because yeah. they haven't come this year and we didn't market it this year. So that's one. The second is uh, part of my job around inclusion is making sure from a membership perspective, and we've got 465 members, the NFCC is the most inclusive place it can possibly be. Yeah. And one of the ways I create that is by coming to events like this and showing the face of the NFCC and encouraging people to get involved in the NFCC. Yeah. And the third role I have is about the role of the NFCC in supporting fire and rescue services to create a more inclusive environment. Mm. So one of my takeaways from here is to go back out to chief fire officers and say, do you know what? I went to the WFS event at the Fire Service College. It was fantastic. Yeah. There were 300 people in the room. There was an amazing buzz. If you weren't there this year, there's a waiting list, but despite that, get yourself down here next year and get people from your service down here next year because there's a massive benefit for your organisation in terms of being involved with this. Mark, thank you for your time. Brilliant, no problem at all. Thanks for coming back and listening to the Firefighters Podcast. This one was brought to you by William Wood Watches. William Wood Watches, as I'm sure you're already aware, are the makers of those incredibly authentic watches with a piece of firefighting history in every single one. On the 9th of June, they created 250 beautiful limited edition pieces of the bravest watch for the FDNY Foundation. They're donating 50% from every single watch to the FDNY Foundation, and it's pretty incredible to see that William Wood Watches are now in the Rockefeller Center, the FDNY Fire Zone store that's held within Rockefeller Center on the 9th. 9th of June, they will be having one of their watches, which is going to press William Wood Watches into the history of FDNY. Johnny and the team are over there kicking ass and taking names. Be sure to join them on their journey. Head over to WilliamWoodWatches.com. Check them out on Instagram. Check them out on YouTube. You can check all of their watches right there from the Jubilee to the Triumph to the Valium to the Bronze to the Chivalrous. And they run competitions supporting firefighters charities all over the world, including the firefighters charity in the UK. So once again, thanks for coming back to the Firefighters Podcast. Go and check out William Wood Watches. Go and check ours out on YouTube. Subscribe. If you're listening on Spotify, if you're listening on one of those platforms, followers, raters, thanks for coming back and we look forward to seeing you again real soon right here on the Firefighters Podcast.